Okay, so I'm gonna get a little survey from you guys. Um, who in here feels like they're able to just set appointments like easily? Um, they, they can just pick the phone up, they can call the pond, they can go to open house, like their appointment setting skills are just really at a high level. Or how would you rate your appointment setting skills? Like your ability to just show up and book an appointment or go somewhere and book an appointment. Put that in the chat for me, please. On a scale of one to five, meaning five is like, dude, you place me anywhere. You put me at the flea market, I'm coming out with an appointment. Like you put me in the grocery store, I'm getting an appointment. You put me at an open house, I'm getting an appointment. If I pick up the phone for an hour and I'm in the pond, I'm booking a couple appointments. Like that's a five. A one is like, I'm making the calls, but no one's answering or no one's, no one's calling me back or... And that's wherever you're at, it's fine. Okay, so I got a three, four, three, four. I got a five from Blanca, absolutely. Um, I got a three out of three, I got a three. I got a 2.5 from Zyra, okay. And that's great, right? Because you're, you know where you're at, you're starting somewhere. Um, now, my next question is, on a scale of one to five, like how well do you think you know like scripts and like objection handling? Like I know what to ask a buyer, I know what to ask a seller. And then like, if someone throws an objection at me, I pretty much know how to answer the objection nine out of 10 times. Like a scale of one to five, like scripts and, and objection handling, Scale of one to five. Okay. So I got a, got two, three, a three, a three, a three, a three, a two, three. Okay, cool. Now my next question to you is, we talked about like your ability to book appointments. We talked about how well you know scripts and dialogue. What about confidence? Confidence, like, okay, I know the stuff. I know the script. I got it memorized. But like the confidence when I speak to someone, um, how well would you rate your confidence in being able to have like a high level conversation with someone about real estate? A two, a two, a two, three, a four, five. Okay. Blanca, you're at a five. Three, four. Okay, I didn't cool. hit. I didn't hit send. <laughs> okay. So the reason I asked those three, right, is because part of being a great appointment setter and part of booking appointments consistently, it's kind of those three things, right? It's it's or the two things, right? So scripts and dialogue, right? Like knowing what to say, knowing what questions to ask when someone throws an objection at you, knowing how to answer that, that's part of it. Like memorizing those things, right? It's almost like the analogy of like your new favorite artist comes out with their brand new album and like you're listening to the songs and like, you know, the songs and you know, most of the words, right? It's like, all right, I know the song, I'm singing, but like, can you go perform that in karaoke? And like, really perform it confidently or maybe you're scared of, to do that in front of people but can you do it in the shower like can you sing like hit the little notes and everything like because you know the song inside and out like that's the big difference right like maybe you you know the words but you haven't done it enough times where like you can now perform it or you can now like sing it in the shower or sing it in the car or wherever you do your singing or perform it live on stage karaoke and like really put some emphasis into it and bring your stage performance and all those different things, right? That's the same way I would, I would, you know, the same analogy I would give to, to appointment setting, right? To effective appointment setting. It's like, you can know the script, like you could have read that, you know, LP Mama a bunch of times and you know what to ask, but you haven't done it enough times or you're scared to do it confidently because you don't want to get pushback from the client, right? You're coming into it with a sense of, well, if I push a little bit or if I like, question or confront the client 
then they're going to hang up on me or then they're just going to say not interested or they're going to ghost me or they're going to call me back, right? Or they're not going to call me back. So confidence plays a role, right? So right off the bat, if you don't know the scripts, right? That is a thousand percent in your control for you to just sit there and memorize the scripts, right? Like the LP mama, I want you guys to write this down, right? What scripts should you know, right? If you don't already know these, the LP mama, right? Which is basically the universal buyer script that you can ask, you can use that on any buyer situation. Um, who could unmute and tell me what LP Mama stands for? Location, price, mortgage, agent, motivation, and book the appointment. Yeah, pretty much. I think you said all of them. Yeah. Um, so the LP Mama, right? That's pretty much like if you go to an open house, you can talk to someone and you use the LP Mama. If you call someone on the phone, if it's a Zillow call or you're calling the pond, you can use the LP Mama. If you talk to one of your friends at a barbecue about buying a house, you can use the LP Mama. Like that's the universal questionnaire. That's the universal information that you need to know to talk to a buyer and the right questions you need to ask so that you can understand their situation and be able to qualify them, right? The second script you have to know is some form of a seller script. We have one called the SQS, seller questionnaire something i forgot i forgot what i call it i made that up back in the day i forgot what it's called i say um, survey i say seller questionnaire survey but i don't know if that maybe that's what it is seller questionnaire survey or something i don't know I, I just try to come up with with the catchy name but either way it's the lp mama for sellers that's what it is right it's the seller questionnaire it's seller like qualifier script seller qualifier script bam there you go Right. How do you qualify a seller? And it's basically asking a lot of the similar questions that just pertain to a seller. Like, where do you want to go? Where do you want to move to? Why are you moving? How much do you own your house? How long have you been living there? What's the property like? Have you done any upgrades? Right. Like, these are the most common questions. Like, if you had to make a magic wand, when would you get, you know, when would you want to get your home sold? Like, you want to have the sign in front of the yard that says sold. Like, it's already done. The money's in the bank. To where if you, anybody says, I'm thinking of selling, like those are the questions you have to ask them, right? And honestly, like those are the two basic scripts that you got to remember in real estate. So if you don't know the scripts, that's exactly where you need to start is you need to take the time to just go into our Google Drive and look up LP Mama or look up SQS. You pop it up right there. You need to print those out and you need to memorize them. Now, if you needed to memorize them, what would, what would you need to do to memorize the scripts? Like Jerry, if I was like, dude, by next week, like you need to have this seller questionnaire, SQS seller, I keep forgetting what it's called. Yeah, the SQS memorized. Qualifier script, I'm gonna write seller it. Qualifier script. <laughs> I made it up and I forgot. Seller qualifier script. You have to have it memorized, Jerry, by next Monday at 1 p.m. I have a gun to your head. And if you don't have it memorized, the gun is going to get shot. All right, so I'm going to pull the trigger. This is, a, this is just a scenario, right? <laughs> what would you need to do, Jerry, to ensure that you memorize that script? If it was life or death. Well, so if it was life or death, obviously, every day consistency is key. You have to um, get it in your memory so you would uh you would probably so i've actually done this for the sqs and i had it um read out i just read it every time just like one line at a time and okay. then once i do that don't look at it see if you can recite it if you can't just read it some more and you do that every day and you get the gist of um what's the content for it and after you get the content for it, you start getting a feel of like the, why these are important in a seller script. And um, you, you start getting the quality aspect of it, if that makes sense. And okay, so, so I'm gonna stop you there. I'm gonna stop okay. you there. You're giving me kind of like the overview, the theory, but I wanna know specifically like, Jerry, I'm gonna shoot you, bro. If you don't memorize this, what actions would you immediately do? Like detailed, like just spit them out. What comes to the top of your head? Like what steps would you do to make sure you knew that and you weren't gonna get shot. Okay, so it, it would be reading, just reading it over and over again, and then trying to memorize it, put it down, 
see if I can recite it. Go deeper. But, how would how would you read it? Would you print it out? Would you write it down on paper? Would you put it on your laptop? Would it be on your screen? Would you take a picture of it? Like I want you to go. I want you to be specific. So, yeah, life or death. I would probably try all those things. I would probably print it out. Uh, get a notebook. Make sure that thing is filled with SQS. Um, uh, like the the parts where I immediately go, oh crap! I don't I don't remember this. I look at that, read it ten times, and then write it down. And then again, put the script away, write it down some more. And then how many you know, times reset, a day would you, go from the beginning? How many end. times a day? How many times a day would you do that? Again, if it's life or death, probably. Yeah, like, life or death. Most of the day. <laughs> probably oh, most of the day? Let's say like six hours. <laughs> six I, I hours don't want to die, man. <laughs> you might die. So you only do six hours because you because if you do a seven I, I feel like hours, conf- that's I much. can't. I feel like I could confidently memorize it six hours a day. And see, I'm, I'm challenging Jerry right now because a lot of times, like, we get so caught up in, like, the theory, like, it's like, no, pretend it's life or death. Like, if you, if, if you put that you're a two or a three and you want to get to a four, you have to pretend it's life or death. Like, if you need to memorize this by tomorrow, then what would you do? And when I said be specific is I would wake up, I would print it out, I would have it in front of me, I would also write it down on a notepad. And did anybody ever get in trouble in school and had to write lines on the on the chalkboard? All right. I would write it with lines, like I'm writing it on the freaking chalkboard. I would have a picture of it. I would change it to my screensaver on my computer. I would change it to my screensaver on my phone. I would print out a copy and put it on my mirror where I get ready. I would if I had to come to work still, I would be taking breaks, you know, every couple hours, I would go in and do 10 minutes. And then I would do 10 minutes later on in the day, then I do 10 minutes later on, I'd pull one of you guys to role play with me and practice with me every single day. On the weekends, I would do it after I got out of work, I'd go home and do it, I'd stay up late, right before I went to sleep, I'd have it printed out and I'd have it on the side of my bed. And I would read it before I went to sleep so that I don't forget what I'm trying to do. Right. And then I would wake up and I would do it all over again. And then I would ask you to quiz me, I would say Blanca, I need to learn this because Enrique is going to shoot me by tomorrow. Um, Can you quiz me real quick? Like, can I role play with you to make sure I got this thing down? Mm. It's kind of like the the Zillow scripts that we had to do. Same thing. We, Diana practiced it. Um, I know that Saida practiced it as well. We went up in front of everybody. We role played it. And that was one of our challenges till we got it. Exactly. But the reason why you guys put so much emphasis, because it was like, basically, I have to audition next Thursday. And if I don't have it, I'm gonna look like a fool in front of everybody. So therefore, I, you know, Enrique's gonna call me out, right? Mm-hmm. But why and, don't and we just do that? You won't get the lead. You won't get the leads. Yeah. And we won't get the leads, right? Mm-hmm. But why are we just doing that on our own? right? Why are we just taking that sort of initiative or that sense of urgency with our business to learn like the contract or learn the disclosures or learn how to show a property or learn how to use FirePoint or learn how to use Slack or whatever it is we're trying to learn. Because a lot of times we don't put a consequence or we don't put like some sort of sense of urgency or there's no gun to our head, so to say, right? So number one, guys, is if if you want to get good at this, like, don't give yourself a year to learn these scripts. Don't give yourself six months. Give yourself a day. Right? Give yourself a day. Like, if Enrique is saying, like, the LP Mama and the Seller Questionnaire script is the two that I need to learn in order for me to start booking appointments at a higher level, like, I need to learn that shit yesterday. Right? Not like, okay, well, I'll practice it this week. Let me see when I can in my schedule. Let me see if the moon and the stars line up. And then if we're in Mercury retrograde or let me, you know, like whatever, right? Like sometimes we're giving ourselves too much time and there's no sense of urgency. Because I'm going to tell you right now, like a lot of the other stuff, like the contract and how to show homes and all those other things that you got to do, those will come when you start booking more appointments. Those will come when you start generating more opportunity in front of you, right? But sometimes we're trying to learn that stuff or we're trying to learn it all. But I want you guys to really, really just get get good at knowing what to ask, knowing what questions to ask a buyer, knowing what questions to ask a seller, and then knowing how to answer the most common objections. 
I want to wait. How do you answer that? Right? Uh, I got to check my schedule to see when I can meet with you. How do you answer that? My cousin's an agent. I'm thinking of working with him. How do you answer that? Right? Like, I don't know if I should buy right now. The market's, you know, it's going to crash. How do you answer that? Like, that's it's basically you learn all those things and like you're like 90% there already, right? The other stuff is going to come with experience as you go and learning the different scenarios. But just being able to go out there and generate appointments like, like that, it's about you learning the scripts and really like going all in on that and saying like, I'm going to learn this. I'm going to be the best person on the freaking phone or you put me anywhere and I'll book an appointment. And I asked about confidence, right? You're not going to have confidence if you don't take this level, if you don't apply this level of urgency, because the more you know it, the more you study it, because you took the time to just get in there every single day, the more confident you're going to be able to deliver it. The more times you practice it, the more confident you'll be. And I can tell you right now that some of you guys, not all, some of you guys are, are doing pretty well. We're all at different levels, but there's a lot of us that are losing opportunity simply because the other person you're talking to does not believe you. They don't believe that you believe yourself because the confidence is not there. There's that old saying, it's not what you say, it's how you say it, right? You know, so if you don't, if they don't think that you believe you, because you haven't taken the time to study and practice this stuff over and over, and you're not able to say it confidently and stick your chest out and put your head up and like really deliver it effectively and, and enunciate certain things and hit on key points and not be afraid to kind of push back. In their mind, they're like, well, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if this is the person that, that's going to help me. So you want to learn how you become more confident you got to study the scripts. You got to master them. You got to master the objections and then you got to just practice it a shitload of times so that you can now say action and you're on stage and you can now perform this thing in front of somebody. Right? So we're going to practice some of that right now, right? That's what I want to, I want the second half of this. The first part, I wanted to really just drill in the mindset, right? This, like the way you got to look at this thing and the way, you, the way, how serious you got to take this if you want to be great. And now we're going to practice some stuff and we're going to do some critiquing right now. When you're talking to people, um, I, I had a coaching call with Zyra earlier. And then that's where I was like, man, I, the stuff that I was telling uh, Zyra, I was like, I, I got to say this to everybody else. Cause like, I think it's, we're all going to benefit from us from this. Um, one of Zyra's uh, her feedback about her appointment setting was, a lot of people either ghost me or they say, Hey, I'm not interested. Or they say, Hey, I'll call you back. Or I'm busy. I don't know if I could meet and stuff like that. Even though these are leads that she called where someone inquired a couple months ago and they inquired, they were interested at one point. So I kind of ran through the script and the confidence and all that stuff. And I asked her if she was delivering it like this. And she said, no, she wasn't delivering it like that. Like she knew the script. She knew what to say. She knew the LP mama. Like I, she told me like, this is what LP mama is, but the level of confidence that she was delivering on there wasn't, it wasn't coming across. Um, one of the common things that she said was a lot of times, like people will say, Hey, I'm busy. I don't know when I can meet or I need to get back to you. Have you guys ever experienced that? Any of you guys, when you're trying to book a time with someone? Okay. So I want to role play that with you guys, because I think that's a common one. Um, you have someone that was, that was interested at one point, they went online, they clicked on something that lead came into our world. They went into an open house, however, that lead came in. So we know there was some sort of interest at one point, right? If they're saying they're not interested now, or if they're saying I'm too busy or I'm not sure what immediately Blanca, like if someone inquired three months ago and they were interested at that point and they took the time to click and now they're saying, I'm not interested. What would you say? Um, so what changed? Is there something that changed from three months ago to now that you're, that you're not interested anymore? So we're gonna role play this. Um, yeah, I just, you know, I was interested, but I kind of got discouraged because I don't know, it seems like the rates went up. It seems like the market is crashing and I'm just not sure if I, you know, if I could even afford 
to get a home now, now that the rates went up. Yeah, all of your concerns are totally valid, Enrique, and I get it. You know, you're not sure. It sounds like you're worried about the market, you're worried about the rates, and you're not sure if you're going to be able to get into a home. That's exactly why we should meet. So what I would love to do is to give you a state of the market, let you know what the market is doing right now, in a sense where I've had buyers like yourself that were interested at some point and got discouraged as well. However, yes, rates did go up. They, they are going up but it also gives you a window of opportunity to negotiate some good terms in pricing. And in turn, you're not gonna to have to overbid because you're not having to compete with the, as many buyers that unfortunately have now not been able to afford to stay in the market. So what I would okay. love to do- How about that? Um, let's break that down. That was really good. I wanna break that down for you guys, right? So we'll kind of break it down step-by-step. Step. The first thing that I, that I told her was, I'm not sure, right, if I still want to make a move because rates went up, the market changed. Has anybody else encountered that when you're talking to someone? Just raise your hand. Mm -hmm. right? It's we're going to continue to encounter that because that's the state of the market, right? Rates are going up. People don't aren't sure. They don't know what that means. There's the news. There's what your friend said. There's what your neighbor said. There's what Instagram said. You know, they're not sure. So the first thing that Blanca did was, if you guys caught this is what did she do? What was the first thing she did when I said I wasn't sure? She acknowledged it and reassured and repeated. <laughs> yep. First step right there is acknowledged what my concern was. Hey, so it sounds like you're a little unsure because of the rates went up. I totally understand. A lot of clients are thinking that way. What does that do for me as, as the, the person on the phone? Let's you feel heard. Yeah, it lets you feel heard, right? And I think that's the big thing, right? A lot of times we're trying to just get to the finish line. We're trying to get to the appointment. You know, well, hey, well, let's just jump on a Zoom. Let me show you why it's a good time to buy. It's like, you got to slow it down and take it back, right? And say, hey, I totally understand where you're coming from. I totally understand you have that concern. A lot of people have that concern. Yes, you are correct. Yes, the rates are going up. I totally understand. Because that right there is automatically going to put you in a position of like, hey, this person understands me. Hey, like, they're not just trying to sell me something. Hey, they understand my concern. The guard gets dropped, right? <clears throat> Whereas a lot of people are getting called by real estate agents, right? If they went on Zillow or if they went to an open house, they went on other sites as well. They went to other open houses as well. They got a lot of agents calling them, just trying to close them to do something, right? But very, very few agents actually take the time to acknowledge someone's concern. Um, I hear a lot of agents, like when people say the rates went up, tell me if you guys have heard this, um, like online or social or whatever, the rates are at a 6%. Oh yeah, well back in the day, the rates were at a 17%. You hear people like trying to compare those two, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's like, okay, so... Back in the day, they were at a 17%. Yeah, but houses were only 100,000, right? Mm -hmm. They're saying, yeah, the rates were at a 17%. Mm -hmm. They're still at an all-time low. It's like, no, there's not. You're missing the context there of where homes are a million now and they were 100,000 when they were 17%. It's a big difference, right? So when someone just says like, hey, the rates were at 17%. No, that, you know, that was high. This ain't nothing, right? It's like you're not acknowledging the fact that the rates are higher, which means people's payments are higher. You're not acknowledging the fact that home prices are a lot higher, right? It goes back to the same point is when you don't acknowledge someone of what their concern is, they immediately are going to put their guard up and it just becomes this, right? So if you're having trouble booking appointments consistently, like after you do your first, your initial pitch, you need to write this down, like ask yourself, are you acknowledging what the person's concern is, right? Because someone's all, that's usually the way it goes, right? There's a format for how calls go. You pick up the phone, let's say you're calling from the pond or whatever. Hey, this is Jerry. Hey, looks like you inquired three months ago on Zillow. I'm just calling to see if you're still looking to make a move. So looking to buy a home. It usually goes intro. <laughs> and then you're already waiting for a response from them, right? You already know they're going to say something, right? 
not interested or yes, I already bought. Like there's some sort of response that's going to come back. After you say your pitch, then there's a response. That's how calls go. I'm going to share my screen real quick because I want, I want you guys to get a visual of this. Um, it's all going to make sense then, trust me. So you have an intro, right? The intro is going to vary depending on what lead source you're calling. Like let's say you're calling an open house lead. Hey, it's Blanca. You know, you were at my open house last week. Just wanted to check in, see if you had any questions about the property. That's your intro. Mm -hmm. Or, hey, this is Enrique. You inquired on Zillow three months ago. I'm just giving you a follow-up call, seeing if you're still looking to make a move, right? The intro doesn't matter, right? That's whatever the lead came from. There's your intro. After every intro, there's going to be a response. And the response is going to be whatever's on the list. Yes, I already bought. No, I'm not interested. Yes, you know, the rates are too high. I'm not sure, right? Whatever it might be, like you guys saw, maybe give Blanca a response. And then there has to be, after that response, there has to be some sort of acknowledgement. I spell this right. You just missed the K or something. Oh, no, there you got it. Oh, sorry. Acknowledgement. Okay. It might be lagging a little bit. Intro, response, acknowledgement, right? This is the way every single call goes. This is the way every single sale goes. This is the way, even when you meet someone at an open house, right? When someone walks into your open house, what's your intro? Hey, guys, welcome. Come on in, right? Hey, take a look around. You know, are you guys looking to, you know, to buy a home for yourselves, right? That's my intro. And then there's a response. Oh no, we're just looking. Oh no, we're just neighbors. Oh no, we have an agent. Oh no, we did. There's a response, right? And then you got to somehow acknowledge that response. Oh, hey, totally understand. You're just looking. Totally understand you got a neighbor. You're a neighbor. Totally understand you have an agent. You want a chair? Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? But what I want you guys to take away from this is that the format of like how a call goes, they're pretty much all the same. Like there's a, there's, there's like a process, right? It's like a natural process that, that, that forms when you're calling someone or when you're trying to book an appointment, intro response and some sort of acknowledgement, right? After you acknowledge them, we're going to break down the next step of what Blanca did, right? It's your response, right? So their response could be like a concern. Let me see. Concern, objection, right? Your acknowledgement is gonna be empathy, repeat and approve, repeat and approve. And then from there, it's gonna be your response, right? Where you're gonna take in, even though, right? You're gonna say like, even though, sorry, this thing's lagging. I'm trying to type while you guys are on Zoom. And it's just like, even though, even though X, right? This is what I see. Let me put this all on one page so you guys can see it. All right. And then it's going to be your offer. Your offer of what you're trying to give them, right? You're trying to book the appointment. You're trying to book a consult. Let's jump on the phone. Let's, you know, let's do this. Let's do that, right? Consult, which we can call a consult, a strategy session, uh, uh, a data overview, right? We can call it a, uh, you can just call it a consultation. I would call it something, right? Like, hey, why don't we go ahead and get together so we can do a strategy session on, 
on how to win in this market today or what's happening in this market or what go over the data, right? You always want to come up with an enticing name, right? Because just simply saying, let's book a consultation. Like Diana, um, let's just, Let's just book a consultation. Let's go ahead and just book a Zoom consultation. That that doesn't that doesn't do anything, right? Like that. Or if I said, "Hey, like Diana, I totally understand where you're coming from. You're concerned with the market, and you're concerned with rates going up, and if it's a good time to buy, let's book a strategy session where we're gonna go over exactly what's happening in the marketplace right now, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you the data so we can see if it really makes sense for you to make a move or not." You see how that's different than just saying, like, let's just book a consult or let's book an appointment and let's meet. Like one of them is way more powerful, even though they're the same thing. At the end of the day, you're going to meet someone. It is a consultation. But one of them is way more powerful. And that's what Blanca did, right? Blanca said, hey, I totally understand where you're coming from. But actually, this is why we need to meet, because this is what we're seeing in the marketplace, right? We're actually seeing a lot of opportunity because of this. And what I think we should do is we should set up a time to meet and go over the data and go over an overview of the state of the market. And then we can see exactly how we, you know, what the best opportunity is for you right now. So what I want you guys to get at is that it sounded great what Blanca did, right? And Blanca books a lot of appointments and closes a lot of deals. But I want you guys to get at how did she go through that? She may not even know that she's breaking it down like this. Like this is her process because she's been doing it for so long. And it's already natural. But as me breaking down that whole intro and like what she went into, this is actually what she did, right? She had an intro, right? She had a response. She acknowledged. She responded with like, hey, even though this is happening, this is what I see, right? Some perspective. We'll call this one um, right here perspective. And then she had some sort of offer at the end where she offered to meet with me to, and she called it a strategy session or she called it, what'd you call it? State of the market overview? State of the market overview. Blanca, did you come, did you just freestyle state of the market overview or is that what you've been calling it? Or did you, did you strategically come up with that name? I think I've been calling it that since all of this change. Okay. Yeah. I just thought of it. State of the market. Let's review what the market is doing. Yeah which is really great, right? Like, I don't know if she realizes, like she probably just said, hey, like this is what I've been hearing, like, and now she's using that in her lingo all the time. Yeah. So right now, I want you guys to write in the chat, like when you're gonna meet with the buyer, what's your signature thing? Like, well, you can't use state of the market, right? Because she already got that one. Just come up with some ideas, just throw them in the chat. Like when you're gonna meet with someone to go over what's happening and all this stuff, like what's a cool little name that you can call it that sounds different from just, hey, let's do a console. Just make some shit up and throw it in the chat right now. Can you share your screen? I want to just snap a quick picture of what you typed up because it looks nice and organized for my brain. Yep. I like it. I'll put it all. I'm going to copy and paste this into the chat also. In fact, I'll turn this into a document I'm also. That real quick, just like so I could see it all in one if I could. Yep, go ahead. So what's the name? Let's see, uh, strategy session. No, but say, yeah, strategy session, market overview. Who else? What's another name? Like if you had to give this thing a title, right? Like you had to come up with a catchy title. Like what's like, Zyra, when I meet with you, what are your strategy sessions? What are your consults called? Like what's the, what's the name you're giving them, right? Like what's the unique name that, oh shoot, this is how Zyra does it, right? Or Jerry, what are you calling it? I just call them either home buyers consultation or market overview. Okay. So I'll say strategy session. And then I say, okay, let's get on and see what, what's, what inventory is out there. And I do pull up the MLS so they can see what inventories. So what I'm, what I'm trying to come up with guys is like, what's, what's a catchy phrase that you can about use? Game a uh, game plan cater to you. 
that's describing it, right? That's what this describing it. But what would you, what would be the title? Like if you had to write a book and it was going to, the title of your book is like the whole, the book is all about the strategy and how to do it. What would be the title of your book? I'm looking for a title. Dare to dream. A 007 buyers in recession. That, that, right? I like that. I like where you're going with that, uh, Jake. Because like just home buyers consultation, everyone does a home buyers consultation. Every agent you talk to, they, it's a home. That's like a generic name. But what about like the how to win in today's market session or like, um, like a uh, bird's eye view on the market. Yeah, that's cool. A bird's eye view on the market, right? Uh, a success, like, I don't know, home buyer success session right? Home buyer, you could say strategy session, right? Strategic offer session or strategic negotiation session. I don't like something that you're going to call it, right? The key point what I'm trying to get at guys is that you've got to call it something because when you're talking to people, just simply saying, let's like, let's, let's meet for a consult. That doesn't work anymore because everyone's saying that, right? So like Mark, like, like Blanca said, Hey, the state of the market consultation, right? or how to thrive in a shifting market, you know, consultation, right? Or like uh, shifting market opportunity session, right? Like, I don't know, like something that you're gonna call it. Or the other thing you can do is you can say strategy session, but then you can describe it so that you're building the value behind it. So why don't we meet for a strategy session where boom, 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 this is what we're gonna do. Right. So Blanca, I want you to pitch me that strategy session at your state of the market, right? Let's go over that last part. You went over everything, you acknowledged me. And now you're now you're telling me you want to meet with me. How would you phrase that? Hey Enrique, what I would love to do is go over the state of the market and let you know how a lot of buyers are winning in this market. And by doing that, I'll show you some data, show you what's active pending sold, interest rates, and how. I'm able to negotiate great pricing and terms. So you're not having to overpay on that house. Okay, great. So she gave me state of the market and then she gave me like three or four bullet points which described what I was gonna get, right? Because remember, like if you're, if you're just trying to build a relationship with someone you just met, right? Like they just inquired or they just came to an open house or it's an old lead, if you're just like, hey, let's meet, like, would you just meet with the random person unless like there was like some, right? Like if someone just called you out of the blue, you don't, you don't really know who they are. Yeah, you probably filled something out three months ago online or you probably clicked on a property or you probably registered somewhere. But like if Lily calls me and like, I don't have a personal relationship with Lily, like I don't know who Lily is. Like this girl just calling me wants me to meet with her, right? So sometimes like we got to understand from a consumer standpoint that we got to build some sort of value proposition in there. We got to say something that's going to get them to like, oh, okay, like that's why I want to meet with you. Or, oh, okay, this is what I'm going to gain if I meet with you. So I want you guys looking at this in a different perspective, right? Where sometimes you can jump on the phone and just make a bunch of calls but if your calls are not quality because you're not putting this level of like effort into your calls where you're acknowledging, where you're empathizing, where you're saying, where you're giving them some perspective, right? And then you're, and then you're not giving them some sort of unique offer like, hey, well, let's meet for a strategy session or a bird's eye view session or let's meet for a session. And what I like to call these is, is a, you know, whatever, right? Whatever name you give it. And then when we meet, this is exactly what's going what's gonna to happen. You know, I'm going to go boom, boom, boom. I'm going to go through these steps. So these are the three bullet points of what you're going to gain. If you're not doing that sort of level, then you're going to make a bunch of calls and you're not just, you're not going to be that effective. You're not going to book appointments, right? Like it's easy to book an appointment from an incoming, like an incoming Zillow, right? That's what I also want to get to you guys. A Zillow flex that comes in it's easy to book that appointment, right? Because they already saw a property, they clicked on it, that's the property they wanna see. So the property is really what's booking the appointment, right? 
But once you go out there and meet them, that's really where the work starts, right? The work starts when you go meet them, before you meet them, the preparation. Do you send them a video message? Are you sending them a text message? Are you sending them other properties? Are you building some sort of value with them? And then once you meet them, are you wowing them? Are you really giving value? Are you, are you talking about the market? Are you building rapport with them? That's where all the work is at. Booking that Zillow Flex appointment, that's super easy. Anybody can book those appointments. But not everyone can go out there and meet a stranger for the first time and convert them to an actual client. And that's where like having these sort of skills where you understand like this is what it takes to kind of build that rapport with someone and show yourself as a valuable agent, you got to incorporate that into the mix. So I'm going to turn it over. We got six more minutes, guys. Bear with me for 10 more minutes. I want to do a couple of some role play with you guys now, but now I want you guys to think in terms of the outline that we just went over, right? I want you to think in terms of your intro and you already expect that there's going to be an objection or a concern then you're going to acknowledge that concern. You're going to give some perspective and then you're going to give me some sort of offer and you're going to call it some unique thing that's valuable to me. Who wants to volunteer and do this role play with me? I'll try Can't it. Be Blanca. Come on, guys. <laughs> Let's go, guys. Remember, come on. We got want to learn this stuff. We got to step it up. You okay, I'll took try. the hour out of your day to, to be here. So I said I'll try. Okay, let's go, Diana. Uh, so let's phrase a scenario. So you're calling, I'm an old Zillow lead, right? You're calling the pond. And I inquired, you know, six months ago. And I was, you see the notes. I was looking for a home, you know, in San Jose. And basically you're calling to see if I'm still looking to, to, to make a move. Right? Okay. So hi, hi Enrique. Hello. Hi Enrique. This is Diana with the XP Realty. How are you this morning? Uh, I'm doing good. Who is this? This is Diana with the XP Realty. I just want to take a quick second. I saw that you made an inquiry a couple months ago and you were looking to purchase a home in San Jose. And I want to see how your home search is coming along Enrique. Oh, okay. You're a realtor. Oh, EXP. I didn't know who that was. Um, yeah, uh, you know what? Yeah, I'm not sure yet. Yeah, we were looking. I, I, I probably went online and stuff, but um, yeah, I'm just not sure. You know, interest rates are going up. The market's looking kind of kind of weird right now. So I just don't know if it's a good time to make a move. Hey, yeah, I totally understand, Enrique. So what you're saying is you were thinking about purchasing back then a couple months ago, and now you see that the interest rates have gone up and the market has changed. So that's very true. Some it has changed. Oh gosh, I got nervous. Sorry. <laughs> so, okay. All right. So yes, Enrique, it is true. The interest rates have gone up. Um, some perspective, some perspective, even okay. though, so even though the rates have gone up, what are you yeah. seeing? Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, the interest rates have gone up. Actually they've gone up and they've gone down. What I'm seeing in the market is that there's there's different options, different loan programs out there. So maybe we can get together on a strategy session. I can have my lender on and we can look at different loan programs and see if one of them can meet your needs. Okay, we'll stop right there. We'll stop right there. I just want to get to that first part, right? Intro, objection, response, and then your offer. So one of the things is you got to spin that concern that negative into the positive, right? Like I told you, hey, the market's kind of weird right now. Interest rates are going up. So step two, let me share my screen. Maybe I should share my screen and you have it up there so you can see it. Okay. Um, your intro was great, right? You respond, your response was great, right? Um, I responded to you, I gave you my concern. You acknowledged, repeat and approve. This is what I'm saying. But now right here, this is the part where I think you got to give some perspective, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, Enrique, totally understand. You've seen the rates go up. But even then, this is what we're seeing right now, right? Or even though the rates have gone up, this is what the data is, sh is showing us. Or this is what we've been seeing for some of our clients or where the opportunities are, right? Because I think right here, this is where you got to build on what my concern was, right? You got to now take my concern and turn my negative into a positive somehow. 
So let's try that again. Mm -hmm. So what would I say though in that? What did Blanca say again? What she said when, like in that response for the interest rates going up, what would I say to well, that? Well, let's, let's talk about that, right? So not what did Blanca say, but in reality, what's happening, right? Even though the rates went up, what are we seeing right now with, with the market? That the buyers? market's still hot. And that there's buyers who are on the sidelines and now they're stepping up and taking advantage of the market because price drops. And so now there's more opportunity. Sellers are. Um, I don't, I don't okay, so let's do this then. No, this is this is a, this is great right here. So in the chat, real quick, because this is going to be helpful to everybody. Right now, with the market changing, what are the opportunities for buyers? Write them down. Or what's what are the pros for buyers right now? Like even though the market, even though the rate's gone up, what are the pros right now for a buyer? in this market? Like if we're thinking the pros and cons, what are pros? Less competition, price reductions, more inventory, more options, loan opportunities, lower purchase price, less competition, contingent offers, less competition, less competition if buyers out price, great pricing terms, less competition, right? All across the board, less competition, more options, more inventory, which six months ago, we didn't have that shit, right? Like we had, there was one house in your neighborhood and everyone was going after the same house and it was going crazy. So rather than saying like, well, what did Blanca say? I want you guys to think like, no, well, what's really happening in the market? You're right. Like, this is where like you, have, you also have to know what's happening. Mm -hmm. So now Diana, like, even though rates went up, we're going to role play this again. And then now you have a whole list of what are the pros of, of making a move right now. So yeah, Diana, I'm not sure if uh, I still want to make a move, you know, the rates have gone up, you know, they say the market's going to crash. It's just, it's just kind of weird right now. So I'm kind of just waiting and seeing what happens. Yeah, totally, Enrique. What I hear you're saying is that interest rates are going up, the market might crash, and you're worried. I get it. Uh, but what I have seen in the market is that there's a lot less competition out there. Uh, there's more inventory. So there is opportunities out there. Even though the interest rates are up, you can find a great loan program. So maybe we can get together, have a strategy session and look at the opportunities out there. Oh, okay, stop right there. Great, that was, that was a great response. That was an awesome response, right? You gave the perspective. So you took my concern, you acknowledged it, you gave me some empathy, and then you gave me like three or four pros right now of buying in today's market, right? There's less competition, there's more loan programs available. One of the big things, guys, that you guys got to talk about is there's the prices are going to be less. The, the lower the competition means homes are not going over the, the asking price as much as they were before. In fact, you might be able to get prices, properties at asking price or even below asking price in today's market. And we're seeing it happen right now. Um, last week, there were 200, you guys need to write this down. There were 270 price reductions in Santa Clara County last week. 270, 270 properties in Santa Clara County reduced their price last week. So this is now things that you need to talk about when you're talking to clients. So like what I would say is, you know, I'm gonna flip the, flip the, the reversal, the role. So, hey, Diane, I totally understand your concern. The rates are going up and, you know, it, it, you're not sure if it's a good time to buy. I totally get it. You know, a lot of people are thinking the same thing. You know, I'm sure you're watching the news and stuff like that. Um, I totally understand. It makes sense. But let me actually tell you what we're seeing right now. What we're seeing is that because of this, because of the rates going up, we're seeing less competition on homes. We're seeing less offers, which means now you can go in and get that property and not have to pay way over asking. In fact, there were 270 properties last week that reduced their price. So what that means is that even though rates are going up, the prices are probably going to balance out and come down and you might end up locking into a home for a lot cheaper than you would have three to six months ago. Right. So that was me like giving my perspective now. Right. That was that step in the in the dialogue of giving perspective. Right. And then now from there, you go into your offer. Right. Your offer is like, all right. So now what I would like to do is get together with you for a strategy session. Now, one of the things that you did is you said. Strategy session. Right. But what, anytime you're going to say your, your session or whatever you're going to call it, I want you to back it up with three bullet points of what that means or what I'm going to get when I meet you, mm -hmm. right? So let's go to the last part. You already gave the perspective, which you did great on. Now you're telling me, hey, 
let's get together for a strategy session. And then what I want you to say is in our strategy session, A, B, and C. All right. Okay. All right, cool. Okay, Enrique, so here's what I suggest. Uh, let's get together. We can go over a strategy session. We can look at the current market. We can look at the inventory. We can also have a lender jump on and we can look at the current interest rates and loans. And then I can get a little perspective of what it is that you're looking for. Okay, great. Friday um, at you work. I like how you went that Friday at two, right? You went, you went in for the close. Um, here's what I want to, I want to challenge you on. Give me something that's going to sound enticing for me to meet. Like just going over the data, meeting with the lender, like that's part of the process. Mm -hmm. But what's the value that I get when I meet with you, right? So I would, what I would say is like, hey, when we meet in our strategy session, I'm going to actually show you where all the hot opportunities are and some of these properties that are reducing their price. We're also going to look at some creative financing options to see like how we can get your payment. Even though the rates are a little higher, there's also some creative loan program options out there where you might be able to lock into a lower rate depending on the program. I'm also going to go over the strategy that we use to help negotiate the best prices for our clients and the best terms for our clients in this market. So do you see how, guys, do you see how I went from like, hey, we're going to look at data. We'll speak to a lender. We'll do this toward now. Like I put more on it. Where it's like, this is what you're going to get from that. This is the value that you're going to gain from meeting with the lender, from meeting with me, mm -hmm. right? So let's do that last part one more time. So you're going to tell me we're going to meet with the strategy session and you're going to go A, B, C, but now you're going to show me, you're going to tell me what's the value that I'm going to get. Okay. Hey, Enrique. So here's what I suggest. Let's get together and we can take a look at what's really going out there. We could take a look at some creative loan programs. We could take a look at, um, the strategy that we use when we, to get our buyers in and make sure that they pay less or we don't leave money on the table. Sorry, I mixed that up. I, it's yeah. Cause, yeah. Keep going, keep going. Okay. So yeah, Enrique, here's what I suggest. Let's get together and we can take a look at some creative loan programs. I'll show you what we do to get our buyers into a home. And we could take a look at what real estate opportunities there are you said something with pricing sorry i didn't write it down yeah so we can look at where the hot opportunities are right where the hot opportunities are mm -hmm. yeah hot opportunities or some of these properties that are being discounted i can go over some of those with you and show you where the hot opportunities are okay so um Try so, one more time. okay so enrique here's what i suggest let's get together and we can take a look at what hot opportunities are out there. Just last week, there was over 270 price reductions. We can also go over some creative loan programs to see what buyers are using in this current market. And I'm also going to be able to show you the strategy of what we do to get our buyers in the home. Would you be available this week, Friday at two? Yeah, what about four? Does four work? I'm, I'm busy at two. I'm sorry, Boom. four is not right. good, but 4.30. <laughs> 30. okay, there you go. Boom, so we're coming up on time, guys. Um, but what I want you guys to take away, right, is you have to follow that process. You're gonna have to go deeper with these conversations, right? Like just simply calling and just trying to book, a, book an appointment with someone and just hoping they're gonna say yes, that doesn't work, right? You need to make sure you memorize everything. You need to make sure you follow that format. All this sheet that I came up with, I'll put that in Slack so you guys can have access to the sheet. But here's what you're going to see, right? As after you do this a bunch of times, what you're going to see is that this way, this process, you use that on any conversation. You use that on any appointment, right? It's all about building value. It's all about empathizing with people. It's all about turning what you offer into a bigger, valuable, more valuable proposition right? Home, con home buyer consultation, guys, I don't want you guys to use that anymore, right? We know what that, that's what it is, but I want it to be like, we're going to do a strategy session or whatever you call it. And what that means is A, B, and C. These are the benefits that you get from that, right? If you take your conversations to this level, you're going to have to make a lot less phone calls. You're going to have to meet with a lot less people and you're going to close more sales. That's just the bottom line because you are building up a way bigger value. Most agents, 
are just trying to go straight to the appointment. Right now, people have concerns, people have questions. You have to be able to articulate and explain what the value is when you meet with me, right? Any last minute questions, guys, and we're done. How do we get the data? That was one of the questions. Um, MLS, guys, you guys know how to use the MLS hot sheet? We can do another training on that probably next week. But when you go on the MLS on the hot sheet, on that first page on the bottom, it'll tell you all the activity and you could change it to seven days, 30 days. It'll tell you how many pro properties had price reductions. Um, you can edit that information and this way you just pull that up, boom, it's all right there. Like what's happening right now in the MLS. And what I would encourage you guys to do, since you guys are the ones out there in the field talking to people every day, is go on that hot sheet every single day. Like take five minutes to just see what happened today. Or do it once a week, right? So you see all last week what happened, right? Maybe every Monday you start your week. Um, because that data, guys, is going to make you so much more effective in your conversations. When you're, when you're able to tell someone that 270 properties had a price reduction last week, and you're the only person saying that, and all these other agents aren't talking about that, like, how does that make you look compared to the other agents, Right it brings you up, right? Your level of credibility. So I encourage all of you to put this in your calendar. Every Monday morning, you pick a time, spend 10, 15 minutes just seeing what happened last week in the market, pulling up that hot sheet. And now you have all your ammunition for the whole week when you're on calls, when you're on consultations, when you're at showings, because that information is gonna be used in all those different scenarios. Make sense? You guys want to close more deals. That is what you want, right? That's the Ryu from last week, right? <laughs> all right, guys, that's all I got for you. Um, this will be recorded. It'll be on YouTube, on our YouTube channel also, if you guys want to go back and watch it. And um, let me know if you guys need anything. Let's make it a great week.